Hello fellow scaled modelers, welcome back to another video, it's your host Ray. Today I've got the 1 over 70 second scale E100 tank featuring the mouse turret. This was made by Dragon Model, uh, or Dragon Models, I'm not sure which one it is these days. Uh, I've just got a simple review of the tank itself, I don't have anything to say about the building process since I really don't remember building this kit, so I don't remember anything if it was good, if it was bad. Uh, this was built in, I believe it was 2017, 2016, right around that time, and I really don't remember any of the issues I had, nor any of the good parts. So I'll just go over the details the tank includes, as well as just some other things that I'd like to point out about it. So if you're here to listen to a review about how the build went, this isn't the video for you. I'm sorry, I apologize in advance. Uh, the only reason that, that I'm making this video is to show that I still have this tank because I really do like it still, even though it's kind of old. So, yeah, let's get straight into it. First, I'll go from the bottom front of the tank all the way to the rear of the tank. So I'll start with the bottom as in the hull, and then I'll move to the turret and whatnot. So, yeah, let's just jump right into it. First things first, starting up at the upper hole, you don't really have much here other than the navigation light which allows the driver to see where he's going in darker conditions. And here you can see this is the driver's viewing port, the driver's optic, so he can see where he's going. Um, I'm going to move the turret out of the way so you guys can see that better. There we go. Here we have two hooks. I don't remember if you are... A, you have the, I don't remember if you have the option to configure these to the point where they're loose and hanging off of the tank, the, the tank, or you have to glue them to the tank permanently so they're hanging down like that. Up here you have the assistant driver's hatch and the driver's hatch. These I believe are molded into the tank itself, into the hull piece itself, so you can't position them in the open position uh, for a diorama or anything like that. And here's what the lower glass plate looks like. Glasses, glasses, same thing. You can see it does have a few weld marks. Well, not weld marks, but the uh, spots where the metal was welded. And they're quite highly detailed. You guys probably can't see that, but there, there is the detail there. And most of the details on the tank itself are covered up due to the uh, lazy paint job. Moving up to the side of the tank, you have the uh, quite large side skirt armor. This comes in one piece, so all three pieces come together as one piece. If you want to have one piece of side skirt armor off, then you're going to have to cut that uh, manually yourself. I chose to add all three because I liked the way it looked. Uh, down with the tracks, the tracks are not functional. Uh, and last time I remember, they were very hard... What the heck is that? <laughs> not sure what I did there with that, but I do remember the tracks are being very hard to fit to the tank, so... Just be be mindful about that. And you can see the uh, half-done paint job here. Uh, <laughs> as you can tell, I, I kind of like frowning on this kit a little bit. Well, this build. Uh, let's see. Moving up to the... We'll get to the turret. Moving up to the turret, we'll start with the front. You have the massive 15-centimeter gun. Uh, you do get the option between a 128 um, centimeter gun without this muzzle brake or a 15 centimeter gun. Unfortunately, I do not have the 12.8 centimeter gun anymore. And here is the coaxial 75 millimeter gun. Uh, nothing too special about that. And moving up to the mantlet and the front of the turret, you can see you got your, I believe this, this, this might be a machine gun port or it might be a gunner's optic. I'm not entirely sure. And here's the other side, if you're curious. Uh, and here's the weld marks I was talking about earlier. Very, very detailed. I'm surprised this managed to get preserved under the entire layer of paint that I did. Also, before I forget, oh yes, the muzzle brake. Those of you who are picky about the muzzle brake like I am, uh, the holes here, they only come, they only uh, are present on the top section of the uh, muzzle brake. The little holes, the vent holes aren't on the bottom. And these vent holes are part of a flat uh, photo etch piece that you have to curve around a plastic part of the um, of the muzzle brake. So, yeah, it's kind of weird, but at the same time, it still works. So, yeah. Also, I, uh, I you guys probably can't see that, but the barrel is hollow. Not all of the barrel, but the muzzle is hollow. Um. Oh, and the gun can depress and elevate within a limited range. So. That's quite cool. 
I do I do want to note that the the fit between the I believe this is the mantlet and the turret itself is quite tight, so you might risk uh, scratching some paint here. Uh, moving up to the top of the turret, uh, you just have some optics ports. You've got one here. I believe this might also be a gunner's port, uh, gunner's scope place, whatever gunner sight. Sorry about that. As well as the might might be the loader and the commander's hatches. They're right up there. These you can't position open in any way. You have to seal these, seal these shut. And here you've got two ventilation systems. Moving to the side of the turret, you've got a machine gun port, uh, I think, or a pistol port for close defense, close quarters defense. And here's the back of the turret. Nothing too special here. You just have an access hatch. I believe this was used to load ammunition. Also, I'd like to note the turret does rotate a full 360 degrees in any direction, both left and right. And you remove the turret as I'm trying to show you. Sorry. There you go. This is how you remove the turret. And this is what the bottom of the turret looks like. There is no internal details on this tank. Okay, now how do I put, <laughs> how do I put this thing? There we go. Sorry for that interruption. Here's the engine deck, nothing too special, you just have your access hatches, your radiator vents, and more radiator vents. Uh, all of these are covered with photo etch vents, however, I destroyed most of them because I was dumb and I still am some, to some extent. But I didn't know how to handle these correctly, so I ended up removing them and breaking them in the process. Here's the engine, uh, well, the, en the back of the tank. Um, not sure what the hell happened with this little hook here, but you got more of these little hooks back here. Uh... Yep. Uh, well, that's basically it. That's all I really have to say about this tank. Overall, it's a decent kit from what I remember. Very highly detailed, I'd liked, I like to mention that. The instructions, I do remember them being quite clear. And yeah, I, I'd recommend this to an intermediately experienced modeler with adequate supplies. Uh, otherwise, you'll get something that looks like this, which is admittedly not one of my best builds by any means if you, if you have any more questions or if i missed anything feel free to mention them down below in the comment section but that's all i have for you guys today thank you so much for watching like comment and subscribe share this to your friends who might find this interesting and i'll see you guys in my next video